Right. So uh, that was the story. Now comes the hard part. So <laughs> this is this is the uh, a dynamic on the network. It's a simple dynamic. You have rules. The vertices change states. The topology of the network is fixed. For simplicity's sake, we work on uh, KN, which is the simplest, most connected graph. We work with a simple, uh, unique probability of transmission, the states are susceptible, infected, and recovered. Normally, people would do that. They will give you the probabilities of transition for each individual vertex as a function dependent on the neighbors. One uh, approach that we uh, use, and he mentioned, is the decorrelation of the uh, dependent paths between a source, a fixed source in the infection, and the test vertex. And you can do that by considering different realizations of the uh, infection. So you can see uh, to the right that, uh, suppose that the red vertices are infected, that the green vertices are susceptible, and that the, green, uh, the blue vertices are um, recovered. One way the system could evolve with probability p i j, which in this case is just the constant probability p is the one above, and with complement probability it could uh, evolve uh, to the one below, right? So the idea is to count all such configurations which are strictly independent from each other since each configuration, which is a realization of the way the disease spread, is unique because we choose to say that the disease spread this way or that way or any other way. So the idea would be to move from a discrete dynamics standpoint in the network dynamics realm um, to a structural motifs and counting trees and structure and combinatorial structures which we can do with a fair degree of speed. Um, as an illustration, uh, we have one uh, particular process which is called a car process which can be interpreted as a terminated Galton-Watson process. This one actually uh, solves the question of um, how big uh, given infection would be at the moment it terminates and this uh, perhaps without knowing it what what this process does is actually select such a configuration and count the number of, uh, of vertices in the realized configuration and average over all of them so um, the key question when we actually made these slides was what is the distribution of um, the number of infected, the, uh, the number of new infected individuals uh, at each time step. So, what does the infection wavefront look like in a network, in a KN network with uniform probability? And we think we actually have a solution for this by counting these independent trees. So that's no longer a key question, but it is a cool question nonetheless. Uh, obvious um, improvements to this toy model would be to now consider arbitrary networks, not necessarily KN. Uh, and uh, arbitrary uh, probabilities of transmission for each edge, which will actually give the model a lot of oomph when it comes to simulating diseases. Now, the key feature of all of this is the fact that we use mathematical inference. We don't use computation, so we use analytics. We get formulas, which you can plug into a computer and have it compute the numbers that you're interested in directly without having to simulate the system a given number of times and then compound statistically significant data. So that's our contribution. Thank you.